let's go down and look at the recursive function. I've got this function descend from. It does take two parameters, n and x. And I know it's recursive, so I'm just going to go ahead and start describing it as a recurrence relation. td of n comma x is equal to, well, the base case is really easy. Here it is right here. When n is equal to 0, I'm just going to return x. This will take constant time. And so, and as will this check up here if n is equal to 0. And so overall, this is going to take constant time. I'll say 1, but I could also abuse notation and say order 1 here. I'm kind of okay with each as long as you know you're abusing notation if you say order one and you know what you're kind of missing with it. If you say one, you're abusing notation as well because you're saying it takes one step, but what's one step? We don't really know. It's some constant number of steps bounded by a constant. So uh, it takes order one time if n is equal to zero. And otherwise, if n is larger than zero, well, this happens. So let's see, we take the floor of n over two. Uh, again, we'll assume that that takes constant time. We're giving ourselves a very powerful computer here. Uh, we are going to do x plus 1. That's going to take constant time. And that's kind of it. We're going to return whatever value we get. So we'll say that takes constant time too. So there's these constant time operations, and then there's a call on descend from. Well, how do we express this call on descend from? And look back up here. td of n comma x that's a little off the screen, let's bring it down a bit. td of n comma x is the runtime of descend from on an input of n and x. Well, down here we're calling descend from on floor of n over 2 and x plus 1. How do we describe that? It is exactly td of floor of n over 2 and x plus 1. That's why we give it a name, so that right here when we need to say however long it takes, we can say that. Our name lets us say however long descend from takes on floor of n over 2 and x plus 1. And being able to say that is very valuable. Uh, we won't worry about the, the extra constant time here because it's going to take at least constant time to do descend from. Well, maybe we should just in case. It's not clear that this will contribute constant time. So let's, let's add in some order 1 piece here otherwise. Okay. So we've got a recurrence relation. I don't really like having the order ones in there, so I'm going to erase them. We all understand that this is some constant, not necessarily one, but that one will probably fill its place just as well. So let's replace those spots with just one. So there we go. Now it's not clear how this works. So, you know, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Uh, we're going to try some small examples. So let's try some small examples. We'll put in n, and we'll put in x, and we'll put in td of n x. Now, our trivial cases here are anytime n is equal to 0. It doesn't matter what x is when n is equal to 0. This takes constant time, and I can see that reading it off of my recurrence relation, and you can also see where in the code that happens. Now, once n is larger than 0, it gets cut by 2. So let's see, when n is equal to 1, well, let's have x be equal to 1 as well. Then this is equal to td of the floor of n over 2, that's 0, td of 0 and 2, which is itself 1. So it's 1 plus 1, so that ends up being 2 when n is equal to 1. And x is equal to 1, and actually, it didn't really matter what x was there. You know, if we made x 3, this still would have been the case. We would have gotten td of 0, 4. In fact, if we make x anything at all, whatever it is, we call td of 0 and that number plus 1. So x is really not impacting this. I wonder if x matters at all overall. Um, let's keep going and find out. That's an interesting hypothesis. So does this matter? And we'll try and come back and answer that a little later. All right, when n is equal to 2, n over 2 is 1, uh, x will go up by 1, but x is, is still, it's never, it's never tested, we never do anything interesting with it except return it, and it doesn't matter what its value is for us to return it. So I, I don't think x matters here either. So with 2, let's be a little more explicit this time. It's going to be 1 plus, so it's this 1 plus, 
the TD of, let's actually write that, be TD of one comma x plus one, whatever x is, because two divided by two is one. Uh, so what is that? What is TD of one comma x plus one? Well, TD of one comma x plus one goes in this case, so it's TD of zero comma x plus one plus one. So let's put the one plus in here. And then it's plus this thing in this blank, which is TD of zero comma x plus one. And TD of zero comma x plus one, well, finally we get down to the base case here. That's just one. And so altogether, this is equal to three. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. That looks kind of linear, although we keep dividing by 2, so that feels kind of logarithmic. Uh, I think we better try another case or two before we decide. So I'll try n equals 3 and n equals 4. And let's try n equals 5. And altogether, I think that'll probably be enough. If it's not, we can try 8 and 16 and 32, uh, just to try powers of 2 and see if they come out to look logarithmic to us or to look linear. Okay, so uh, I'm going to guess x won't matter. We'll come back to that guess if it's important. And when n is equal to 3, then the floor of n over 2 is 1. Okay, so we actually we get down to this case right here, right? The 1 case, where that's 2. So it's 1 plus 2 again. So with n is equal to 3, that's also 3. Hmm. Okay, when n is equal to 4... Uh, n over 2 is 2, uh, so now the 4 case is 1 plus the 2 case. The 2 case was 3, so this is 4. The 5 case, n over 2 is 2.5, floor of that is 2. So the 5 case is 1 plus the 2 case. So again, that's 4. Uh, and now I'm seeing a logarithmic pattern, because uh, the 8 case, for example, if, if we were to extend this table and say, well, what about with 8? The 8 case is going to be 1 plus the 4 case, so that'll be 5 steps. And then the 16 case will be 1 plus the 8 case, so that'll be 6 steps. And sure enough, we get to this logarithmic behavior. It looks like we just had, you know, some constant thrown in or something like that. Okay, so this looks very logarithmic. That would match the intuition you'd get since we're dividing by 2 each time. This part kind of throws it off, the x plus 1 part but it doesn't turn out to matter. So my hypothesis here is that TD of nx takes logarithmic time, and we can prove this by an induction proof. We would, we would assume uh, some sort of logarithmic form for the amount of time that the recursive call takes, and then we'd prove that the same logarithmic form holds for the original call. But we're just supposed to do the analysis here. We're not supposed to prove it correct. So I'm going to say we've made a good guess. We backed it up by thinking it through. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to say td of n comma x is an element of O of log of n. And notice that x just does not play a role here.